Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. And I can't choose what Yo! I want to say. What does that say? Hey, folks, here we are. We're back. We're full of Chipotle. I got a gurgle going, and I might fart something wet. Yeah, it's where we just finished. We're doing it. We're double dipping here. We're doing two episodes in a day, which we used to do all the time, yes. way back in the old Benji days. Oh, Who was around for the Benji days? Man, that's Who's ben- is that a guy? Benji's dead, I think. He I died. think he's a dog. Benji uh, was his name. O. Monkey Pox. O- something o- got him. O'Shanahan. I-, I don't know. He he was the original OG. We pitched him and Becky. Wow. Who works at my management company? That's right. And uh, we Love had to pitch. Becky. We like sat and the two of us were shaking, being like, "What if we just talked about our name a week?" And they were like, ah, it kind of sucks, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, and it did suck for a, a little bit. Yeah, a couple of years, but... Um, we figured it out. Now we're here, now we're fucking, we're 69ing, but yeah, it started way back at stand-up New York. My whole life used to take place in the Upper West Side. Ah. I had therapy up there, my my, my home group, uh, sobriety group was up there, I had, uh, the podcast was up there, Chipotle. I was at stand-up New York every 10 minutes. And one other thing, mm. my dentist, my dentist was ah. up there, and I had to go to him every day for about ten years. Didn't yeah. work out. <laughs> Anti dentite root but, canal. I mean, it was just a full. I was an Upper West Sider. Yeah, you now were. I'm never up there. No. Well, you'll be up there for the Beacon Theater. That was last week. Oh. And boy, was it something. Yeah. We had 2,000 people there, <laughs> and uh, the movie bombed. Nobody liked it. It's 11% Rotten Tomato. Oh. I'm so terrified of that Rotten oh. Tomato oh, score. They're biased. I'm going to have a green splat right next to my face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Certified rotten. I mean, if I get, it might be out by now. If I get 46, I'll be happy. No, you'll get, you'll hit o- over 50. You haven't seen this piece of junk. Oh, I mean, wow. Is it that is, bad? Huh? It's a clunker. It stinks. The crowd was booing. Chuck left. He smashed his camera like Kurt Cobain and came up, uh, well, left there. Tim Dillon has a copy, and I asked for it. He said, oh, I burned that. <laughs> so people are talking. Dylan's saying, so people have seen it. By, by the time they're listening, people have seen it. It's weird that we're doing two because they're going to want to tune in and hear me talk about the Beacon <laughs> right. and the Schubert <laughs> yeah. and the Vic. Sorry, folks. I don't uh, think I'm going to be able to see it that night, right? Am I going to be setting stuff up? We're doing a big shoot. I don't know. I don't I, know either. Might, uh, I might big shoot myself. I, I assume you'll be able to sit because you'll get set up and then we'll yeah. play the movie. You're not going to be filming while we're watching the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get him a screener so he can watch yeah, it on his own time. You don't need a screener. I want to see this. Well, come on. The, yeah, la- uh, the more you let's there's... see this thing, the worse off we are. <laughs> I just keep it a secret. All we should right. just move on. No, I think it's good. I think it's going to touch you. You're a New Englander. I oh. assume you hate your dad. I, I love the trailer. trailer is beautiful. Oh, right. If you like it. the trailer, I think you'll like yeah, the movie. Yeah, very, very touching. All right. If, like, if it wasn't you, I'd be psyched about that trailer. I appreciate that. I feel like the people that love the trailer will love the movie, and the people that hate the trailer will hate the movie. Yeah. Well, that's, that's good. Isn't that good? I guess I'll hate the movie. That's an accurate, <laughs> accurate representation of the movie, then. I think so. I, I think so. I mean, you you booked a one nighter just to get out of watching the thing because it is pressure. Uh, I got if to you, do it a gig in Kuwait. If you think about it, it is pressure. I've done that room. It, it's pressure to watch a movie. Kuwait, don't tell me. With people in the room, it's actually yeah. mean to make people come to your premiere. They got to walk cruel. up to me afterwards and Evil. be like, "That was great." Oh, it's brutal. not a nice thing to do. No, that's how I feel about my wedding. Yeah, yeah, I'm not looking forward to that. But no. the bachelor party's gonna rule. I'm not either. But yeah, yeah, the bachelor party's gonna be fun. I mean, we got a questionable group going, if I might say so. Well, people are dropping like flies. Yeah. You know, what? I got a neck injury. One guy's sweater's dirty. The other guy's having a baby. Yeah, sweater's dirty. Oh, Hanley, Hanley, yeah. Lady Hanley. He pulled. I haven't talked to him, but if Sam's not going and Veter's not going, I don't picture Hanley. What's he going to do? Hold hands with Sean Patton? No, nah, he's going to need craft service. He's going to need a masseuse. He's going to need uh, you know, bottle service out there. He, he's a high-maintenance gal. I'll see if he'll come. I'll work on him. I want him to come. But I, he's a guy, once those guys are bailing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But I'll be there, maybe, you know. George Balin. I'm going to do a couple, a couple days there. I might leave early. 
No, I can't wait. Even if it's you, me, Ari, and Patton, we'll we'll fuck in the ass. We'll rip it up. We'll eat good. We'll go to a titty bar. We'll hit a jet ski. We'll splash. We'll swim. We'll sing. We'll dance. We'll cook. Where was I? Who was I with Ari? Someone was like, hey, Tampa, that's like a big... Oh, yeah, I was, I was at the Beacon. And it was Nate's wife was like, Tampa, that's like a big strip club city. Number one. And then Ari's like, is it? Huh, maybe we'll make use of that while we're ah. there. Like, like she said it like, hey, you guys might want to check this out. I'm yeah. like, that's why we're there. We're way ahead of you, sister. But we're going to be grilling out, cooking steaks. We're gonna, we have a private beach. I know. Private, Jerry. We're going to be laughing, petting zoo, midget toss, you name it. And we got to get you laid. I mean, I know this is going out in the air, but she doesn't listen. Let's get you to get your cock sucked and your asshole eaten. Maybe we'll flip it up. Let's go gay. Let's go Florida. We'll go gay. We'll we'll switch it. That's not bad. I'm never going to go gay again. You think wow. she'd be mad? You think she'd be upset if you ah, sucked a cock? A little perturbed. Because I know a couple women. I'm not going to name names. And they were like, you know, I'm very progressive. But if I found out you sucked a dick, it would really put me off. Yeah. See, they're just as bad as us, these ladies. Yeah. Well, it's all preference or whatever, well, you know? It's all pipes, but it's all, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, all pipes. it's biology. It all comes back to biology. We're all wacky and wired because a woman scissoring a woman is still somehow feminine, but a man kissing a man is also feminine. Yeah, I was getting some straight dope from a, a group of ladies. We were oh, all talking sex. Oh, I love the straight dope group lady. Well, and they were really giving me the, the business. They said, you know, if my if I found out a, a guy, not even like my husband, but a guy that I was seeing or whatever, or if I learned in the dating process that he had hooked up with men, and they were like, especially if he was a bottom, oh. I just couldn't do it. Like, I couldn't do it. I yeah, couldn't do see? it. It's a deal breaker. I love but the some honesty. women are into that. Some, some women, of course, are like, hey, that's hot to me. And some say they're into that, too, because they want to seem hip and cool and open-minded. But I think the the majority is the, the first gal. Yeah, it's interesting. Well, it, and this is what's weird about sex shaming in either direction. Like, people are like, well, you can't want to have... If you, if so, nowadays, if you're like, I really am into black women or black men, they're like, that's... A sh you're, that's no good. That's a fetishizing. Fetishizing a group, but you're like, you can't help what you're into. You can't help your I know. feelings and thoughts. That's how I feel. It's uh, almost like shaming someone for being gay. It's yes, the same thing. Same thing. Well, we have these these boxes. If, if you're in this box, you're good. If you're in that box, you're bad. Uh, I, I I like to finger a box. But mm. Alingon had that funny bit about uh, Alingon Mitra. Check him out. Very funny. He had that bit about... He's like, uh, oh, I'm really into Asian women. And all these girls are like, oh, what a creep. Come on, Asian fed, get out of here. And then his friend was like, I love black guys. And we're like, good for you. Right, He's like, well, right. what's the difference? How come mine? It all comes back to history. It's kind of like how you go, uh, oh, I like skinny girls with fat, with big asses. And everybody goes, all right, you pig, you sexist, misogynist. But if you go, I love plus size women, they go, I like this guy. Right. And you're like, well, they're both shallow. They just have different preferences. But why yeah. does that one make you feel better? Yeah, you can't help what you're attracted to. Yes. You know what I mean? I'm like, I, I like, you know, a blind lady with uh, orthopedic shoes is what I think is Oh, hot. that's hot. Yeah, wouldn't you mind, wouldn't you like uh, to eat Put some that, of that out? that wiggly stick up my ass. But, and also, the longer, I, I do a bit about it, the longer you're with someone, the more you need mix-em-ups. I call them mix-em-ups. Give me sure. a mix-em-up. Blindfold, mohawk, you know, yes. photo of Chuck, you know, something nice. Eye patch, a peg leg. Peggy, hit me up. Let me ask you this. Here's a question for you. This is a good topic. Someone's going to give you $15 million. Someone's going to fuck your wife, and you got to watch. She's going to really fuck. What guy are you choosing? Mm, well, I think I'm going to go... Uh, uh, little Ken, Dick. Ken right? Jong. Right, right. <laughs> Out of the gate. A Little Dick. Hold on. I might have one, too. We're gonna be, it's going to be a fired episode. Yep. <laughs> That was a snaparoo. Jesus Christ. That was a snap. Pain. That was embarrassing. Peapod. We just did a QA and they asked the most embarrassing moment in comedy. That was it right that there. Was that it. was just a little. I mean, that was a that was like if you threw a firework and it just went. You're like, oh, we got a dud. Well, I was with Matt Wayne all weekend, so we were recording farts. This is funny. I, all right. Hit let me, me play this. I, I, I played this one, and uh, I was like, I got a good one coming. And watch how quickly Matt Wayne dismisses. It was a dud. The funniest part is Matt Wayne dismissing the fart. I was okay. like, hey, here comes a big one. I got one. I got one. I got one. I go like this. He, he poo-pooed the fart. He poo-pooed. But you got to listen. Sorry. Now, 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> was so quick no. to know. It's a quick no. It was no. so mean. <laughs> no. No, next. And then I got a quick double fart. This is a little double, double trouble. Oh. That's fun, right? Yeah, a little, yeah. A little yeah. aftershock. Bam, so bam. it's for Aflac. <laughs> that was Aflac. an Aflac fart. Uh, Gilbert. But the way he went, no. Yeah. You know, he's a vegan. He gets those vegan oh. fart. He's eating broccoli all day and spinach and french fries, so he really can rip it up. A tofu fart. Hmm. Yeah. But anyway, uh, so you're going with a small dick to fuck your Small uh, lady. dick, uh, preferably hairless. I don't want like a hairy chested motherfucker mm. in there. I want a, like a smooth Filipino boy. See, now my thought is I, I go the same guy. We did the Q and anal. What, what man would you go gay for? I might pick him. I'm like, I got Gyllenhaal fucking my wife. Yeah, she's going to like it. He's not, you might as well like it. I'm sitting there. And he's not gonna fuck her again. He's out. I know. She's but stuck with me. He's not gonna leave me. He's not gonna leave his girl for my wife. But she'll be thinking about him with you. Well, as long as she's happy, you know what I mean. I'm, yeah, yeah, she can't right. be that happy with me. She's thinking of somebody. That's a broke back marriage. She, uh, hey, that's not bad. All right, I'll, I'll make. I'll dress her up like Heath Ledger, like the Joker. Ooh, now that's hot. Bad makeup. You know, he bought all that makeup at a CVS. Fun fact. No kidding, the Joker makeup? Yeah, yeah. He bought his own makeup? Well, the guy bought it. This, the makeup <laughs> guy. Or gal. Makes sense. Makeup sex. I watch those movies. I think if, you know, my movie's obviously going to explode. 98% Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> Chuck cried. It's going to be huge. If they cast me in an X-Men thing where you got to sit, you ever see the videos, the speed up videos no. of the guy just sitting there reading a book and they're putting like the crazy Oh, tent- yeah. You know what I'm talking about? They, it's around the eyes, the makeup around the eyes where they're like gluing the space alien shit. Yep, yep. I couldn't do it. Even no. if they were like, it's $5 million and we'll make Hall fuck your wife in the ass, I'd be like, pass. Yeah, Jim Carrey said he did eight hours for the Grinch. That's what I'm talking about. Eight hours. Marines came in and taught him how to deal with pain because of no. how much the contacts hurt. Oh, yeah. is that right? And he flipped out on set. Yeah, it was crazy. Wow, I got to get a Marine to fuck me in the ass because it's going to hurt. <laughs> wow. They could help me get through it. They had, to teach him, they had to teach him how to like put up with like torture. They taught him techniques what? to put up with torture. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that that shit, the makeup shit, I, it just stinks. A fat suit, maybe. I'd put on a, a big old oh, a chuck suit, suit, you know. But you could also just <laughs> get fat. You could also just do a chuck. Yeah, yeah. Didn't you used to be fat, though? When I first met you in Providence, weren't you a big fat guy? Huge. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I mean, obese, morbid. Now you had a rascal. I, 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 probably, I probably weighed like 40, 45 pounds more than I weigh right now. Okay, Come on. all right. Yeah. It was more than that. I, I, in my memory, doing that pod, I remember walking yeah. up the street by mm-hmm. the arena to go do yeah. this loser pod. I really am a good person. I give back to the community. <laughs> I remember you being a big, fat shit. Am I crazy? Uh, I, I think... <laughs> I think I remember you had the wheelchair ramp. <laughs> Yeah, and the, the little, uh, the little Tetris handle. Yeah. <laughs> a little joystick. A joystick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had the, the beer helmet. No, I, now uh, you're thin. You're not even like 90s fat. You're fit. I, I, I'm getting there. I still want to. Yeah, I'm getting there. What'd you quit? Pasta? Sugar? Um, when I moved to New York, it was funny because I, I got out of a relationship in like fall and so I was like, you know what? If I'm going to be by myself, I don't have to. I don't have to go out to dinner. I don't have uh-huh. to do anything mm, social. Good point. I'm like, I'm going to control like whatever I want. Like I eat shrimp cocktail every day. And it's and like, good for you. And you're not a drinker. And I don't drink alcohol really. Oh, that's, oh, that's huge. Huge. a little bit. A little once in a while. That's a but big not leg up. But yeah. yeah, so I just kind of, you know, I had a ton of work to do when I moved here. A ton of commitments. And, but I was all by myself. Busy. It was just work and just like controlling what I eat. Right. Not to mention, you threw your back out. Plus, in in Rhode Island, you know, I was a food writer. And my, uh, my ex girlfriend, uh, my ex girlfriend was my photographer. So we're constantly oh, wow. going out to eat, and she's taking pictures, or sending us dish, 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 dish. Boy, you've worn a lot of hats. I'm You're still, like I'm a, still a food writer. A me and Mark, guy. me and Mark are gonna of, go in in August. A lot of spanks. I'm gonna go, go write an article in uh, Rhode Island about our new restaurant. We're gonna go to it, and they, uh, yeah, they usually like send you out a ton of stuff. Oh, fun! Yeah. Oh, it's How are you fun. getting out of that one? This is news to me. <laughs> but, uh, no, I'm just <laughs> but no, that'll be fun. Yeah, we'll figure that out. We'll yeah, go for that's breakfast. gonna be great. By the way, you just get, you just bought yourself about 75 mean comments with this uh, little piece of yeah. Yeah, you talked. That was uh, 12 minutes over. Okay, I'll that cut was it. too long, but uh, don't cut it. It was good. <laughs> yes, food writer. Um, All right. Lady uh, writer. So let me let me get right to it. Yeah, sure. Hey, folks. 
Fume, baby. Fume is the safe way to quit smoking. Fume's 100% Canadian maple inhaler replaces the hand-to-mouth habit. Simply insert one of their non-addictive flavored cores. Fume cores come in dozens of flavors like peppermint and lemon berry bliss. Woo-wee! I like fume. I like the peppermint. It, uh, you know, it just freshens you right up. It comes in a cool pipe. It's wooden. It's fun. It feels good. It tastes good. Get on it. There's no smoke, no vape, and no nicotine to worry about. Even if you're trying to quit smoking, fume cores can help with relaxation, energy, and more. Whether you're a smoker or an ex-smoker still struggling with cravings, fume is the perfect tool for you. It's time to create positive habits and quit naturally with fume. Head to breathe fume. Dot com slash Tuesdays. Use promo code Tuesdays and save 10% off your entire order. You're going to save on the cigarettes you aren't buying and save on your initial purchase of Fume. That's 10% off your entire order when you head to B-R-E-A-T-H-E-F-U-M dot com slash Tuesdays. Use code Tuesdays. You got it, folks. Get Fume today. Hey, hey, folks, you've heard me talk about how much I love Native. We got a hot Native offer for you. I appreciate the thoughtful formulation behind all their products. Native understands it's not just what's inside, but also outside that counts. That's Native, baby. They're releasing their deodorant in a new improved plastic-free packaging. Native is doing their part to help our Earth with the new 100% plastic-free and recyclable packaging. When you buy Native's new plastic-free recyclable package deodorant, you are saving 37 grams of plastic. Native is also a proud partner of 1% for the planet. They are committing 1% of their plastic-free deodorant sales to environmental nonprofits. Just like all of Native's other deodorants, their plastic-free deodorant is aluminum and paraben-free while killing odor-causing bacteria. 24-hour odor protection keeps you feeling and smelling fresh. Native offers scents, including their classic coconut and vanilla. I like Native. My lady uses it. I use it. You just throw a little on. You smell good. It's subtle, but there, it's perfect. You don't want to smell like a goddamn tree. But it's right there in that sweet spot. Get yourself some coconut. Go to nativedo.com slash Tuesdays. Use promo code Tuesdays with stories, one word, at checkout and get 20% off your first order. That's nativedo.com slash Tuesdays with stories. Use promo code Tuesdays with stories at checkout for 20% off your first order. Get on it, folks, and smell better. Thank you. So uh, I just want to get this out because I'm sure people at home are like, oh, we had to wait a whole extra week for this queef. But uh, so we do the Texas. We go to Rogan. Uh, oh, we're at the Rogan. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> I'm in Cleveland flying, flying from L.A. To do, to, to <laughs> to do West Orange, New Jersey. Yes. Sorry, that's a deep cut. So <laughs> I should be at the same part. Yeah, I fly in from Cleveland to Dallas Fort Worth and then Fort Worth to Austin, which is like a twelve minute flight, you know. But guess who I bump into at Fort Worth? Let me take a guess. Fort Worth, Shane Gillis. Hey, you hey, got it. First all try. Right. He's flying. So you go, oh ah, we're doing wrong. You know, I jump into his arms, he kisses me, he says an Asian slur, and then we jump oh. on the flight. And uh, we get there, and he goes, I'm hurting, man. We did the fully loaded. Mm. It's seven days of just pure whiskey, Bud Light, and anal. I got to I gotta have a <laughs> salad. I need to not drink. And I go, I, I am with you, man. I've just been in hell with these flights. I won't drink tonight, but I could really murder some barbecue. Ah, mm. BBQ. Texas, baby. Mm. You, 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 right when you land, there's a smoke trail coming out of the chimney, and it just smells that sweet savory rib. Mm. You a barbecue guy? Love barbecue. All I mean, right. two brothers. Who talks about two oh, brothers more than me? Oh, 
San That's Antonio. Right. It's all I ever think about. The big tree, the crushed ice, the mac and cheese, the moist pussy, the, the brisket. Oh, I love moist Soaking pussy. Soaking brisket. Two I, brothers, San Antonio. I will say that is probably the best barbecue I've ever had. Ever had. Am I right Easily. or am I wrong? Am I crazy? Am I gay? San Antonio. And it's out there, too. It's like an hour Way away. Out. You got to park in a field and ride a horse in. Shout out to Michael Suarez. He's the first one that brought me there. Mushy Mike. Mush Mike. So... Shane Gillis goes, I can't. I'm, I was going to go to Sweet Green and go to bed at 8 p.m. And I was like, come on, you've changed. And Ari shows up with his floppy hat and his dreidel. And he goes, uh, oh, we got to get barbecue. So Shane's like, you fucking assholes. And I'm like, you know, they have salads at a barbecue place. Mm, I suppose. But they're covered in queso and uh, pulled pork. Well, I think Shane is weak. He's a weak, weak man. I sure. told you, I was at the Monster Truck Rally, and he's like, I'm sober this week. And a guy went, hey, Big Shane, how about a Bud Light? And he went, okay, you got me. That's it. That's all <laughs> I mean, it takes. So we go to the barbecue place. Now, uh, the hostess lady comes up, Kayla or Carly. She goes, we're all big fans. <laughs> We have a show downstairs. You guys want to come? Drinks are on us. And we're like, what? oh, you queefy whore. What are you doing to what us? What kind of show? Like a rock show. Oh, Stubbs. I see. We went to Stubbs, which has a whole, oh, that's where Stubbs. Chappelle was during right. the pandemic with the whole kitten caboo. So where was that? What? That, that, was, fart? A that was a burp. Oh, okay. I thought you farted. Uh, so we go, oh, we, couldn't, we said we weren't going to drink. Here we are. Shane's in a wheelchair. I'm on fumes, but uh, here we are. This is Sunday? Yeah. Just, just Sunday past. Yeah, and the taping, the recording is on Monday. Mm. So you want to be fresh, because uh, I don't know if you've heard about this this podcast, but a lot of people listen to it. That's what I've heard. Not when I do it, but yeah, I know what you mean. Well, I, <laughs> didn't you get Cut. Cut. From Pandora? No, I think because uh, uh, Rogan yeah. had to drop a couple. Yeah, I think you went, were one. Yeah, when it went to Pandora. That's what it's called, Spotify. Isn't it? Spotify. Spotify. Whatever the fuck. When it went to Spotify, I was dropped, but that's because it was a stinker, I think. Oh, we uh, talked about Louis. Uh, I can't remember. There was uh, some There was some clip going around that you were like not psyched about being involved with. That was the second that was the time. Second that was one. the second time? That was the second time, what? and uh, I didn't care. I just felt, you know. Yeah, it was a weird clip. Yeah. I remember that clip. Mm. Uh, that stink. was bad. I've never seen the clip. I watched. So. Whew, I stink. By the way, I texted him. I was like, hey, can I come plug my special? Iced? I'm out. Damn. I'm out, Jerry. Wonder what happened. Yeah, I think I bombed. I just bombed hard. The Dewey Cox story. Ah, Cox. What can you do? But you, Shane, All Ari, right. Stubbs, downstairs, rock and roll, free drinks. Yeah. My father's gay. So for the record, I want to say... I would much rather do with these hooligans than just go on alone. Going on alone on Rogan is is not a Oof. picnic. Oof, it's tough. I'd rather be with any group of people. Give me any group of three. Put me in there. Antifa, Wayans Brothers, you name it. Yeah, yeah. it's better to mix it up. Absolutely. It ain't all on you. So uh, we go to this rock show, and it's just, I'm talking all out metal. We leave immediately. Which was good, because we were about to start drinking, which we didn't want to do. Mm -hmm. So then we go, let's hit the pool. We hit the pool. We swim a couple laps. It's very wholesome. I buy one beer. Ari gets a beer. Ari sharts himself immediately. What? The barbecue. He's old. He really is old, and he's got bloody sharts, too. Was it a blood shark? I don't know. He. I told him to jump in the pool again and rinse it off. But uh -oh. uh, Hooligan, pooligan. Ah, uh -huh. yes, pool again. So... Uh, we we hang out. We do it like a we do it like a real bonding. I love a bond. Can we linger on the shark though? This just seems crazy. Don't don't just I mean, glide the, over a shark. There's not much to tell. He he <laughs> was sitting there, and we were talking about uh, politics and art and life and love and society. And he went, "I just sharted." Oh my god! And we go, oh, and he just sat with it. It was like a, it turned crusty. He's got problems. The this clown. guy. Yeah, yeah, he's a mess. But, you know, when you're that age, your bowels are very weak. I think so. Yeah. I mean, he's in his late 60s. Yeah. Yeah. He's got no hymen or what do you call it? A Kegels or whatever. They're all ruined. They're all shot from the Holocaust or whatever. <laughs> so he's donezo. Uh, but, yeah, he sharded. And I said, get back in the pool and rinse it. He goes, I'm not going to. By the way, saltwater pool. 
Oh, that's fun. You what, float. What's... It makes it a little easier to swim. Is that what that is? Yeah, it's like you, you got your buoyant. Ah, buoyant. When you swim, swimming in the ocean is a hundred times easier than swimming in a pool. Have you never noticed? Oh yeah, good point. I'm a big ocean guy, and then you go swim in a pool, and you're like, I'm sinking. Right. The ocean, you you float. You can just lay there in the ocean. The ocean heals. I love the ocean. What about the uh, the eyeballs? Eyeballs. Can you open them? Eyeball chambers. Oh, um, well, I told you, I got a phobia. I haven't opened my eyes into water since I was eight years old. Same. I, I opened them. To, I had perfect vision, 2020. Everyone says I'm crazy. This is 2020. This is 1990, 2020 good, vision. Good show. Uh, my friend Ron Reynolds dared me to open my eyes underwater in the hot tub. I did it. I came up and... Everything was blurry ever since. You needed glasses. I've needed glasses ever since. It changed the whole course of my life. I was cool, and now I'm a nerd. People think I'm an asshole. They push me in the bushes. They droop me. They, wow. they, the, the homeless people are attacking me. And it's all because of the glasses. And meanwhile, I was, I was a top-tier athlete. Oh. I fucked pretty well. My father's <laughs> gay. You know, I, I, can name, I can give you some sports stats. I stink at chess. I don't like sci-fi. I hate math. <laughs> I almost failed out of high school. Who is this Ryan Reynolds character? <laughs> this like, guy fucked you. I, I mean, I got the, the crooked teeth, the jawline, and the glasses. But if you bloop, bloop, soup those yeah. up, I, I'm a cool dude. <laughs> Man, this guy, really, it's like a, a superhero origin, but the other way. I know. He went bad. He went villain. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm 40 years old. I'll throw a perfect spiral 40 yards on the run. It'll land right in your hands. But this asshole made me open my eyes underwater, and I, I, I'm a fuck ever since. Man, oh man, I just picture uh, right when you came out, you're like, I can't see. So I hand you a green tea, a chocolate chip cookie, and a pair of dorky glasses, and the rest is history. My teeth went wild. Too, they were perfect. <laughs> I had perfectly white. You just must have uh, banged up against a jet. It was gorgeous, but yeah, open my eyes underwater, and it's been downhill ever since. I'm telling you, I can't see shit. I can't see Peter. <laughs> oh, deep gut as well. Uh, Holy uh, hell, this kid, Johnny Reynolds or whatever, this kid should be in jail. He's a Tuesday, Ron oh, Reynolds. Oh, thanks a lot. Well, I mean, we we got a funny guy out of it. You probably were less funny then. Big Tuesday. I think it was at my, my my sister's soccer tournament or something. He can't. We, you know, when you were a kid, you had a friend that just was always there. Always there, jerking it, fucking it, eating, well, sleeping. It's you because name it. these eighties, ninety parents they hated their children. You're like, you can't bring him by himself. Yes. He'll he'll fucking just ruin our lives. Yep. So you like get Ron Reynolds on the horn, and they can go and, and hop fences and climb trees or whatever so true i remember going to family trips with my friends my family of didn't course. go on a trip, but yeah. i'd be like they were like we're going to pensacola florida you're coming with me i'm like is that okay but they'd rather him play with me than them i think i just was someone was telling me about this i think this is happening less they don't do sleepovers anymore because these parents keep raping and, and killing the children. Is that right? Yeah, I think because you don't. Is that happening? They don't look into the parents. Well, think about how weird it is. You have like a seven-year-old, and then Billy from class, you know, he's got a boner and a, and a cum stain on his knees. Sure, been there. And he, and he goes, hey, my mom wants you to sleep over. And the parents go, in the 80s, they went, go sleep over. Yeah. But they didn't do a background check. No. So your kid is just sleeping at some asshole's house. Ah. So I think nowadays you don't do sleepovers. No, really? That I'm, was a big part of my childhood. I pissed on everybody. I'm telling you. Well, in the blue state, I'm sure the red states are having child orgies or whatever, but I, the blue states, it's all safety this and safety that. Uh-huh. How about that? I'm telling you, they're, they're wearing masks and they're not having sleepovers. Wow. You want a sleepover, you got to move to Georgia. I guess, or go to Epstein's Island. I don't know, <laughs> but this is all news to me. Sleepovers, are, it builds character. It builds interaction and social skills and sleepy. Well, I think the kids came home. And they're like, yeah, fucking Eric wiped his ass on my forehead when I fell asleep. That's part of the fun. Nice. Yeah, that's better. That's more like it. <laughs> you had to let that chicken, uh, what do you call <laughs> Marinate. it? Marinate. Marinate Bargetsy. Um, <laughs> I do. I, I think that happened a lot. Where they, You know what I mean? You fall asleep for They come home with a dick drawn on their forehead. Right. And their asshole bleeding. And the that's parents. part of it. Whatever. I know it's part of that's it. That's a I, Tuesday. To these young whippersnapper parents, it's not cool. All right. All right. Well, I mean, these kids are missing out because a lot of these people now is they do the overprotecting, and it actually is more harmful. It's kind of like of Purell. You know, Purell, you put Purell on every 10 seconds, now you get AIDS because you you touch one doorknob. 
You see what I'm saying? Of course. I've okay. never touched Purell in my life. I find it disgusting. I'm it's, not even kidding. It's jizzy. That's not even a joke. I find it gross. I wash my hands once a couple of weeks. Same, same. Once an election cycle, I'll do a, I'll do a rinse. That's <laughs> if I, it. If I take a shit and I wipe and it gets all over my hand, which it usually does, sure, then, I'll, it. then I'll wash my hands. Yeah. You know when I wash my hands? When I shit on them, George Carlin. <laughs> exactly. Uh, where's that clip of the uh, the uh, Apatow doc? Huh? Didn't see that one either. But, uh, all right, moving on. All right, so, so you're in Texas. You're at Stubby's. We're in Texas. We're at, at the pool. You sharded. He sharded. He's old. He's got no hymen, no butt kegel. So we go up, and I, I've been on no sleep, you know, just staying at the airport, drinking every night, doing these theaters. Finally, these flights get to Texas, and I go, I, uh, I'm getting sleep. I'm taking pills. I'm going to be rested for the for the podcast because last time I bombed. I don't know if I told you. I don't remember. This is our fourth time doing it, I believe. And it was the last time I just, I was on two hours of sleep. I did Burt's Pod before. We got drunk at 8 a.m. Then I did Rogan with like a sleepy hangover mm. and a foggy. I bombed. Yeah. And nothing worse than bombing on that. It's the biggest platform. Believe it, I've done it twice. I'm telling you. <laughs> So it stings, right? Solo bomb stings. I, I want to move on. I can't wait for this story to be All done. Right. It's the worst nightmare of my life. I'm talking two bombs. Emails. Uh, you stink. It sucked. Worst uh, episode ever. I was drunk. My, my ticket sales went down. Oh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima <laughs> over here. I so, lost followers. So, uh, uh-oh. Put the phone down. You're oh, killing God. me. Oh, jeez. Uh-oh, is that Rogan? It's bad. No, it's all it's all pipes. My whole family's got COVID. They're all dead. Uh, well, it's about time. All right, I'm listening. So, um, at least they're talking to you. But, uh, so, we, I, I take a Seroquel. Seroquel. A Xanax. A <laughs> Xanax. Two melatonin. A weed gummy. <laughs> and uh, it's something else. I can't remember, but I just went all in. I'm like, I'm sleeping. And boy, I slept 10 hours, Ooh. which is rare for me. We wake up. Gil- <laughs> it's rare for most humans. <laughs> <laughs> Eight is rare for me. So Gillis, I wake up. He's like, what are you up to? Rogan's like, you guys want to steam? You guys want to shoot arrows? You want to kill a horse? You want to choke a cop? You want to tase me? <laughs> like He's like... It's like six in the morning. Like, no, we don't want to eat elk and go on a sauna, you psycho. You want to, you know, you want to go archery and all this shit. You want to put on war paint and kill a, a squaw. I'm like, no, no. I so, got to get back in there. I want to do all those things. I got to get right, back well, in. Put in a word. I'm sorry, Joe. I'll try harder next time. I'll come in with knock knock jokes. I'll, I'll have hot takes about, the, uh, you know, the blacks or whatever it sure, takes. Sure, sure. <laughs> blacks. So, uh, I just go, I, I ignore all those texts. And then Gillis goes, I'm going to go do a gay workout if you want to go to the gym. And I said, I'll be there. So I go down to meet Shane. He's got the kettlebells. He's fat. He's doing his whole thing. He's got a trainer. Everyone's so, got trainers these days. I know. I, I, I got trainers. Should I get a trainer? I got Biden needs training wheels. <laughs> but um, so I go down there. And, and you really, because uh, as comedians, everything's a joke. Mm. We're very cynical. We're very pessimistic. Sure. So to see a good buddy... In short shorts, swinging a kettlebell, it's a little uh, vulnerable. It's off-putting. I don't care for it. Yeah. I, when I'm at the gym, I don't want anyone to see me ever. Same. I go to the gym at like 3.30 a.m. I'm there till 3.40, and I get the hell out of there. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm with you. And you ever bump into somebody at the gym, you got to go, Huh? I know. I guess I got to leave now. Thank you, you. You feel like a putz in there. You're like, yes. I'm trying. I want to look better. I'm stupid. My father exactly, hates me. Exactly, exactly. So it's a weird moment. It's very vulnerable, but I go, I'm not going to mock him. I'm going to join in. And we had a nice, mature workout together. It was nice. How about that? <laughs> Remember, speaking of which, when we were in uh, Arkansas... I think it was Arkansas. Arkansas. We went to the gym. We were just whipping the big ball around. <laughs> that was great. It was gold. The big bouncy great. ball that you do push-ups on or uh, Sit-ups. crunches on. We were just taking it and throwing it as hard as we could across the gym. New Mexico. New Mexico. It at was, the casino. Uh, yes. Was it New Mexico? It was New Mexico. I believe it was. It was a yes. barren wasteland. New Mexico. It was. We were just punting that big giant <laughs> foam ball. It was really fun. Yeah, the lady on the treadmill wasn't wasn't into it. But <laughs> it was uh, great. Great time. We were howling, laughing, just Dying. kicking that ball. But that's what <laughs> comics do at a gym. But he was sincerely working out. So I said, I'm going to just join in. Ari, of course, had to get a Svitz because he's from Auschwitz. And he had to sit in a hot room with gas. But we did it. We showered up. We took a walk. Me and Ari got breakfast. That's the thing about Rogan. 
He's so generous that he gives you like a credit at the hotel. So you can, oh, you can buy nice. food, you can buy drinks, you can buy room service, whatever. If you don't have a hotel, though, you, you don't really get anything. Huh? You don't get it. I didn't get anything. Ah. Uh, we'll put in a word. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I'm ruining your childhood here. But uh, so you eat, the good, you eat the good breakfast, you get a smoothie. Did he pay for the room? Yeah. Which, which is new. Ah. He all didn't right. do that so, before. Yeah, no, he certainly didn't. Uh huh. Whew. I don't even know if mine aired. <laughs> it aired. Damn. All right. So we go over there, and it's just good vibes, and he's got the lady there who does the COVID test and all that shit. Oh, he yeah. checks your antibodies. She's pretty. She's very attractive. Her I remember. Third time's a charm, Joe. Get on him. Come on. Help the brother out. He's got a movie coming out. Film. And a special. And a special. And a hook shot. <laughs> yeah. So uh, she goes, you want to get a COVID test? I go, I'm good. What else she got? She's got a spread of just, uh, like, uh, what do you call that? Uh, perks? Booster? Not booster. Uh, what do they call those? Uh, extras. You know, you get them at, you get them at oh, the, yeah. the Jamba Juice, so you want to put in a yeah, whatever. Boosters, extras. I've seen both of those. Yeah, um, yeah. Good show. Add-ons, I've seen. Add-ons, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Walk-on. What's a walk-on? Walk-on? That's someone who doesn't have a scholarship. Ah. Rudy. Rudy. They just go to the school and they go, hey, let me try out. Giuliani. Okay, well, whatever the, you know what I'm talking about. It's like these extra boosts. Boosts, but a booster's been ruined by booster. Right. But these boosters, so she's got like the NAD shot, the hydration shot, the vitamin C shot, the Metamucil, whatever it is, the Timonium. So <laughs> I go, give me the NAD. And she popped that thing, full needle. Right what? in there. Ari got one too. What? It. What are you doing? You feel like a god. You let some lady at the Rogan's. That's like her. Oh. It says Chuck. It'd be like if we had someone in here and Chuck no. was just giving out shots. Chuck's JMO. She's uh, a nurse. She's a nurse. She's a registered sex offender. No, she's a registered nurse, and she's got the scrubs on. She's got the gloves. She's cute. She's got a one of those uh, here things. What is that? You know, stethoscope. You open a safe. Yeah, scope. And she gave me the NAD shot, and I gotta tell you, Fatty, I was, I was up and at them. What's I was, NAD? What is the NAD? Give it a goog. I don't know what it NAD? stands for. I think it's uh, disclosure agreement. I don't know, but national anal. Department. <laughs> Anal dildos is pretty good. It says oof, nicotinamide. Uh, adenine, I don't know what it is. Nicotine. It's a type of intravenous treatment that can stimulate cell regeneration in your body. Mm. It binds with elements in your body, offering a host of benefits like reduced withdrawal symptoms during addiction recovery and enhanced <laughs> cognitive processing. Well, the cognitive yeah. was true because... You know, you go in there, it's a little awkward, you set up the mic, okay, what are we going to talk about, eye contact. I was rolling, baby, and I think it was the NAD. I was just clear-headed, joke a second, it was all popping in. You know when you're a little foggy, you can't you can't find the joke? Zing it and zang it. I was like uh, that movie Limitless. But that's who you are now. We're doing that no, now. No nad. No, he didn't I'm, give you a nad. But I'm comfortable with you. This is a second episode. That's your fifth time doing this goddamn show. I'm nervous. He's buff. Yeah. He's four foot one. He's got a thick neck. I don't know what's going on. Did my name come up? Oh, yeah. Uh, from him? Well, we threw you in there. Yeah, jeez. <laughs> it wasn't good, but uh, I need a nad. I'm going next time. I'm getting a nad get the right nads. in my dickle. Yes, and I need it a works. nad, baby. I was on the fucking moon, baby. I was rolling. Uh, they didn't offer me a nad. The nad is new. <laughs> Dan new nad. <laughs> nad new nad new. Hey, Dan but, is nad backwards. Uh, and then nad are men. Oh, there we go. Are you tell me I can't get on the show with this stuff. <laughs> this is gold, JoJo. <laughs> Hey, hey, folks, Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Raycon. I've been listening to a lot of Pearl Jam lately, and it's been great. It's been even better using my Raycon wireless earbuds. Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. Hard to believe they were always pretty great with optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit. These earbuds are comfortable, and they will not fall out. Raycons offer three sound profiles to match what you're listening to, plus noise isolation and awareness mode let you be immersed in sound 
or hear your surroundings. I like Raycon. I throw them in at the gym, sometimes even just to sleep, uh, or even walking around the house. I just like them. They sound good. It's crisp. They fit snug as a bug. Raycons give you eight hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life. Wireless charging makes powering up a breeze. Raycon gives you the same audio quality as other premium audio brands at half the price. These bad boys are built to last. I've seen people talking about their Raycons, falling three stories, get lost in the rain, snowstorm, and still working, baby. It's easy to use, it's easy to see why Raycon's everyday earbuds have over almost 50,000 five-star reviews. I left one of those myself. Check out Raycon's wireless earbuds. You're going to want to leave them a five-star review as well. <coughs> Go to Raycon.com slash Tuesdays and get 15% off your first order. That's by Raycon.com slash Tuesdays to, buy, to get 15% off your first order. Buy Raycon.com slash Tuesdays. So either way, we just had a rip roaring. So Ari, before when we were at Stubbs the night before, Ari goes, "You know what? You drink your fifteen beers, Shane. I could do that." And Shane's like, "Here we go." And he's like, "I could do the fifteen beers." And he goes, "Shane goes, I will bet you five thousand dollars you cannot keep up with fifteen beers." And he goes, "I don't know if I can pay that, but I bet I can do it." So he goes, "All right, oh my God. I'll still give you the five grand." So we shotgun two. I'm drinking uh, straight up whiskey with ice. Uh, maker, not makers, uh, Buffalo Trace. Shane's doing his uh, his whiskey, and then the weed starts going around. Oh, the weed, and this is not just weed. This is Rogan. I live in a shelter. <laughs> I know QAnon. I fucked Elon Musk. Weed. You know, this is next level. Mm-hmm. So I do the fake hit. Sure, I stick with the cigar. Ari hits the weed. He does the shotgun. He does the Bud Lights. We do a good two hours. At one point, I look over. He's doing this. Oh, boy. On the microphone. And we make fun of him. He's old. He's Jewish. Uh, then it was full-on Holocaust. Six million and one. Laying on the floor. Puking into a cooler. I think he puked eight times. This is the thing about Ari. He's not even a drinker, first of all. He drinks. He drinks, but he's not a drinker. Sure. He has, like, he'll go weeks without drinking anything. He's not a booze That's true. guy. And, to, to your point, he just filmed a special where he was sober for, like, a month. Exactly. So then he just kicks it right into high gear with this shit, and, whoa, it hit the fucking fan. And he weighs about 125 pounds. He's 64 years old. Yeah. He's a Jew who who's don't have a, a reputation for being the big boozers. There's a couple exemptions, obviously. Sure. But... He can't. He just, just just by weight, he can't drink like Shane. No, no, no. Shane's a big, big, beefy bitch. But uh, Shane looks like Chuck a couple years ago. That's right, with the, about a foot on you. And uh, he went down, Black Hawk down, Black Jew down. It was ugly, and we all pissed on him. We took photos, and it was it was like a high school memory where. I was like, all right, all right, we got to get back to the hotel. We're doing Kill Tony that night. We got And he was like, leave me. Leave. I can't. I oh, can't. Boy. He's like doing this shit. He's got the T-Rex arms. And then he would just yak again. And we're oh. like, all right, we're leaving you. Puking. What is he, 11? Uh, I mean, that is he's humiliating. much older than that. But yeah, it was bad. It was, And it's all on tape. It's all on... This will sell him out for this will sell his tickets for another year because it was just so exciting. I'd return my tickets. I, I, this is humiliating. He tried though. I got a well, hand it to tried. him for trying to to stick with the you know the bull here. Sure, but it was not pretty. And then so you know it's weird when you're in a room drinking for hours and the smoke and weirdness and headlocks and vomiting. Sure, you get out of there and you stand up and you're in the lobby area of that that Rogan warehouse and you're like. Oh man, I am way drunker than I thought. Yeah, of course. Because yeah. when you're in when you're it, stationary, you feel good. Yes, and, and you then could, it's still daylight out. Yes, it's yes. daylight. Your 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 feet are wiggly, and you're like, oh boy. And we got in the car. We're making fun of the guy. I think I did the blindfold on him oh, <laughs> while he was driving. You know, and we get back to the hotel, and Shane's like, I'm going to bed. I'm like, all right. I ate at the hotel. Laid down, and then Hinchcliffe's like, "Where are you?" And I'm like, "Ah, 
So you had to peel your fat, drunk ass up, get out of the bed, walk down 6th Street, go to the Vulcan, sold out, it's crazy, Gillis didn't show up, and Shane or Tony's like, where the hell's Gillis? Gillis wakes up and runs over there. It was pretty amazing. And we did a hell of an episode, and uh, I blacked out, went to bed, woke up, flew here. The worst, craziest part of this is walking up 6th Street. That's, that part to me is Yeah, just, that was tough. Forget about it. That's traumatizing to me, but that's the worst part about day drinking. Is yes. When you start, it's just the worst feeling. It crum- Your whole atmosphere just like crumbles down on you and you get that depression that like oh yes. my god and and you Fuck. go you go from this magical elixir that makes you feel great and strong and fun and that same 5 hours later that same liquid is poison and you're yes, like of course I, my body hurts i feel like i have shit inside me that needs to come out yeah and the only cure is more that's it or a needle from fucking ratchet whatever her name is <laughs> nad N A D E N me the war into the G, but uh, so that's not fine. This is crazy because this is just two days ago. Yeah, yeah, I got back yesterday and I was like, and then I saw you and Sam at the cellar. The cellar was hot. Great hang, great time. I hung with Sam a little bit. He's got all kinds of crazy back problems, but it was great to see him. And I was texting Ari that day. I didn't realize it was all going on. Yeah, I'm trying to plan this other thing, and uh, he was like, got day bombed. And I didn't know what that meant. I thought he meant like overwhelmed. Oh like no, I got bombed during the day, but. Uh, yeah, what a mess. But is the episode out? It's got to be a hit. It came out today, I think, or yesterday. It's going to be huge. This is our best one, I think. And Ari, they, the, the photoshops have already come in because we got all these photos of Ari like this. Oh, geez. So they're all just Ari on a, on a top of a mountain laying down, Ari in a coffin, Ari in, in next to Kobe. I mean, all kinds of great stuff. Oh, this poor guy. What a, what a poor sad man to try to <laughs> prove he, himself through drinking at the age of 71. I know, but he's rolling with it where he's like owning it and po- reposting all the shit. He's like Ali. Ooh. Whoa, that was hey. a potpourri. Hey. That was fun. That was like you were warming up for the concert. <laughs> um, it's like he's like Ali in 1980 trying to fight Larry Holmes. He's yeah. all puffed out and just like standing in the corner and like, does he know where he is? This yeah. poor sad guy, the once great Yes, well, I don't know about that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. that smells a little funny. Sorry, that was the guac, but uh, yeah, great time. That NAD, I might be hooked. Chuck, you got to get a get a bag of that and bring it into the studio because oh, it will. is it's a. I can get a rubber glove, lifesaver. Yeah, yeah, but a needle, just a needle. I don't want any shots of anything. I don't like the shots either, but it was fucking worth it. Can you get it in like hot dog form or something like that? A powder you put in a drink and <laughs> maybe, mix it. Maybe, maybe a hot dog powder. I don't know. What but... did you give us the half signal? By the way, where are we at? Yeah. I'm all lost. We're at uh, 42. Oh, okay. Oh, we geez. gotta get a clock in here. <clears throat> clock. We need, a, we need a clock. And oh, should we open the box? We got a gift. Oh. Maybe that's a clock. Oh. oh, it's a clock. He gave it away. He oh. sold. Oh, the face. How did you know it was a clock? I said we need a clock, and then this asshole who can't keep a secret went, he lit up like my father's Christmas tree on Halloween night. Nice poker face, Dickless. Jesus Christ. I mean, literally, you're like a child. You couldn't be a dad. He's like, I hope I get my bike, and you're like, whoa, I hope so too. That's a fun dad. I like that. That's I guess a fun so. Dad. All right, pass this box over pass here. Pass it over, you smokestack. Also, what an asshole. You should have let us open it before the shows. We would have been able to no. see. Who, who sent this? Ron Reynolds? What's going on here? Hey, Michael. Oh, and I got to say thanks to, uh, uh, what was this guy's name again? Peter. Guy? Uh, no, it was Latino. Ra- Ramon. It was uh, with Ramon. He sent a poster. Yes. Hold on. There's a receipt in here or something. There's here a it comes. For you. you should read the letter. Yeah, it is Guy. I got it right. Guy Valdez. Ooh, good coffee. I sp- yeah, I think he spilled some oil. Oh, boy. I can't get it back in there. Well, let's see the. Should we pull the poster out? Or is it too it's much? Too hard to get it back right. in there. But I think it's X, right? Yes. He said, is. "I know it's you X. love X. Yeah. I love you, and uh, you're my X." All this right. This looks like it needs a, a knife, though. This is no, no, really. I already opened it, so you could just. Open oh, it the that's a good what producer. Good, uh, good yeah. producer. That is a good producer <laughs> opening our shit. <laughs> oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh wow. Let's put it down it's here. To me too. It's to all three of us. Uh, Michael Camilleri. Whoa, whoa, look at this. Whoa, come How on. about that? Yeah. Is that a handmade wood? McCullen. It's signed in the back. We need some batteries. Did it come with batteries? 
Uh, yeah, there's batteries in the box. Wow, oh, this is beautiful. Beautiful. It's so thick. And wow, this is tremendous. All right, Hugh, who's it? Michael. Michael. Mc- Michael McLuhan. Big Mike. Michael Camilleri. There's your bats right there. Wow. With uh, with a big nail. Let's shove them in there. Yeah. All right. Wow, this is tremendous there, Mikey. Thank you, Mike. And if you got any gifts or, or whatnot, a bomb, anthrax, send it in. We'll open it. There's Finally, a coming. fan who cares. There's another, another one coming for Joe. Someone reached out to me, and they're like, I'm going to send Joe something. And so oh, wow, that's even. very nice. It's about the movie. I don't know what it is. Oh, though. No, it's probably a review that says I suck. Fourth of July. It's probably a fucking acting lessons book. I can't get this. I think this battery might be too big. There's two places we have to put batteries in, I think. Double A. One's my yeah. asshole. I don't know what the night. Oh, this is to put in the wall. I assume. Five. Yeah. That's what a nail is. Double yep. A. It's not getting in there. I Come can't. on. Use a little elbow jizz. Thank there you. you. Hey, there you go. There comes the There's other one. There's a little one. note in there of exactly how to use it. I think that's just for packing. Got it. Fudge pack. All right. There you go. Look at that. Is it clicking? The little lights, they're not twinkling. I think you gotta like wind it. You gotta something. wind it. It's like a windy it's clock. Like a note. Well, you're a note. Dear Mark, Joe, and Chuck, after continuous mentions about the studio needing a clock, here you are. I'm a Brooklyn queef who builds guitars and recently been making some clocks. Been meaning to build this for a while now, but couldn't land on a design. I kept trying to make it too complicated, like the rich people's watches. Once I reminded myself, Lunch Stuff Studios, it all clicked. The main dial with the red hand is your on-air time. Hmm. Rotate the red minute hand, can do this from the front of the clock, to 60 once you start recording. There you go. It will show the elapsed time in minutes. Oh, I did. So I can do it physically from the front, he said. Whoa. Like so th- this? I wind it back like that? Yeah, I and guess then so. Just start? Interesting. Go. The smaller black subdial is a normal clock adjusted wow. from the back of the me- mechanism. Batteries are nailed and nail are in the box. Hammer the nail to the blue tape line. Don't blame the mechanism. I mean, that is gorgeous. I, I'm in love with this man and this clock. I mean, this is Look at this. That's real wood, That's folks. Handcrafted wood. I mean, I got a splinter. I respect wood. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks for the laughs. Michael Camilleri. What time is it right now? Someone tell me what time it is. 2.59. All right. Three o'clock coming right up. Here, I'll let the people see it. Wow. Clean my clock. I really wind it. Really Second hand. If they're listening at home, they're not going to care for this. Tick tock. <laughs> How about that? Hey, that works. That's about right. Look at that. And then this is clicking. Look at that. A minute has passed. Analog. I believe. Yeah. I got an analog in my pants. All right. I'll just hold this for the next uh, 20 minutes or so. Sure, that works. Boy, we really could have used this before we started recording. We got the nail here. All right. Well, the nail. You nailed it. Yes. Oh, uh, that was awesome. What a great gift, because usually it's horse shit. By the way, some guy sent some watches, too. Oh, I got to give a... Speaking of horse shit, yeah, we got a couple. Cats here. I think they're uh, what do you call it? Uh, calculators. They're tight. They're calculators. Yes, yes. Cal- Casio calculators. I gave one to my nephew and one to a homeless kid, and uh, they're they're loving it. Yeah, they're really cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. They sent them right to the comedy cellar. We both did sets last night. We got a nice gift, but it's gonna be hard to beat old Beepy here. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> this thing beeps more than my uh, my sister's cunt on a on a uh, Tuesday in the fall. You got that right. She's and, got uh, a. Oh, oh, that was fun. Oh, Heads up. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that was really something. That was my sister's cunt mention beep. Wow. That wasn't even a time <laughs> beep. You nailed it. Okay, folks. Um, but yeah, this is this is all very exciting. It's all pipes. You got a that big right. announcement. Uh, Chuck has been fired. This is his last yeah. show ever. It's his last day. He had a good run, Fats. It's just uh, the, the the people have spoken. I'm yeah. teasing, of course. And ba- and the, and the gift card, Bakubi. Some people showed up with. Uh, Cheesecake Factory gift cards. I think I got a ripper right here. I think this is a Kelly ripper. Check the ripper. Oh, Just a cutie. Ooh, that a was cutie. a baseline. Oh, there we go. It's a little aftershock. Oh, there's a third. It might not be good. It's a little stale. It smells like a cake with that's dry. It might be cake. Holy uh, shit. I think your underwear caked. <laughs> um, but I think I might be out of stories. I don't know. I got nothing. Uh, Wait, what did I do? What did we do last night? Sunday. <laughs> what do you say when you say things? Sunday, I drove back um, from 
McGoobies. I came back from McGoobies. But I did this. This is a good move. I like this move. I mean, it's not a good story, but maybe you'll plug something in and plug. we'll save it. I mean, this, got, this is me on Rogan. I'm like, well, I was at McGoobies. I drove up. Oh, it was pretty yeah. good. I mean, I could just, it's just the word. I can't, imagine what Reddit says about oh, me on Rogan. I think Jamie fell asleep. Oh, I mean, my nephew told me I was a piece of shit. Well, he's got problems. But, uh, we did uh, McGoobies. We're driving up, and I always want to get out. You hate Sunday driving. It's like takes five hours. Uh, and now I'm too old to drive all the way back from Timonium because I go to bed at twelve fifteen. Wait, too asshole. old to drive back from Timonium? All, on the, the night oh, of the show. The night of the show. Yes, I like to get it over with. So I do this. I'm like, why don't we drive halfway? We'll go to Cherry Hill, New Jersey, which right side of Philly. That way we're we're north of Philly. And that way we got two hours tonight, because you're always jacked after the show. Yes. But I don't want to drive till 2 a.m. Also, my garage closes. Ah, the garage. Plus, I'm dropping him in Brooklyn. You got to go to Brooklyn, then the whole thing. So I go, we'll get a hotel, and then we'll stay in Brooklyn. We'll wake up early in the in the 7s or the 8s a.m.s. So we'll be home at 10. That is early. So he goes, great. And I go, I'll get a hotel. But I forget that it's inflation and Ukraine and Biden and the, and the pandemic and whatever. Monkey so I go, I'll get us a couple hotels. I go on hotels.com. The rooms are like four seventy five. Wait, wait, wait. You have a hotel. In Timonium. But I want to get halfway home. Oh, oh, the first I see the night of. The night of. Got we it, leave sorry. after the show, drive two hours, stay in the hotel, wake up the next morning, drive the rest of the way. The cheapest hotel, which is a shithole, it was called Clarion. I know Clarion. Yeah, it's Clarion, which sounds like Clarendon. And then the next night, I stayed at a hotel in Long Beach, Long Island. And that hotel was called Allegria, which sounds like Allegra. Ah. Clarendon Allegra. Uh, well, hey, don't we're, stay at the uh, Metamucil. We've really hit the bottom of the barrel here, folks. <laughs> the Sudafed Hotel is a sleeper. I might stay at the NAD Inn. Here we go. Oh, it was all air. Oh, that it was bad. Went. That sounded like a turd. <laughs> Well, uh, so anyways, the hotel costs like like 600 bucks. Each? I didn't have the heart to tell them. No, 300 each. Oh, you just blew your whole profit margin. I know. That's what I make to do a weekend. <laughs> I know. And so uh, we drove up there. It was a nice feeling to get up there and sleep and, and then wake up early and leave. But you're like, that was an extra 600. Not worth then, it. And when I booked them, I told them, I'm like, ah, the club probably pays 500, but they pay 75 a show. So that was 325. So I had to give them 200. I spent about $900 on this son of an onion. Ay, ay, ay. I netted a buck 50. <laughs> so I had to trade in the Sentra and buy a, uh, you know, a bicycle. Yeah. Holy moly. What a tough go. I mean, this is what you, you should have just gotten there and, you know, done it at night. Got home at two. You, you made, you spent no money. I know. It cost me $600, but I would have been sleep driving. I'm, I'm old. Well, I want to be in bed. He could take the wheel. I'm not letting him drive my car. It's he's a, he's a vegan. It's a Sentra. <laughs> you can't have a vegan driving a motor vehicle. That's true. They're delicate, these, these people. I got a boom boom like you wouldn't believe believe <laughs> but, oh, <I> believe. <laughs> uh, yeah all right yeah you don't want a vegan in charge of that i guess maybe you want a vegan riding a horse because they'll treat it right <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to buy a car wheel well i eat meat i don't kick horses you know you do I mean? you I'm, gotta kick them to uh, yeah. uh to get them oh, going yeah, that's how you yeah, you hit the, the ribs with the heel. Yeah, I'm not into that. I mean, I eat animals. I eat chicken. I shove steak up my ass occasionally. Pork, I don't care for. I do. I pork my wife. But, um, yeah, yeah, and you eat pussy. <laughs> but, Clam. <laughs> not, not since I was 28 have I eaten a pussy. Oh, uh, what are you, DJ Khaled? But. Wow. Oh. Uh, <laughs> or on but I still feel bad for animals. I'm not like, sure. hey, fuck this cow in the ass. I, I, you know, I feel bad for him. I sit there and I go, oh, the poor cow, and then I eat it. Well, there's got to be one animal on a farm going, hey, this ain't so bad. I got wide open spaces. The guy's fucking me. I think so. There's got to be some goats that are like, this is great. I'm getting laid. I'm eating grass. No, I think the sheep probably like getting fucked. Yeah. And, yeah. Why wouldn't they? And they just get shaved. They don't eat them. I think they shave them. They, I think they drink, walk around. What about sheep milk? Yeah, but that's easy. It's just someone jerks off. You come in a cup with some. Part of <laughs> that's that. true. That's true. You might get a hair in there. All that. Uh, that. What do you call this? Shorn? What do you call it? Curls? What do you call that? The sheep? pubes. The, the pubes. The mane. The wool. <laughs> wool. 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 Wooly. Wooly. There you go. Wooly. Yeah, wool. All right. Wool. wool. I forgot about wool. That's what wool is. Yeah. 
Huh. I love sheep. Dude, I went to Wales. Everyone's like, oh, the sheep. That's this a is different a sheep. animal. Sheep stinks. <laughs> I went to Wales, the country. Ah. And the sheep are just beautiful, like Brokeback. You watch Brokeback and the sheep for days, and it's just spectacular. Yeah, oh, the rolling hills with the sheep. They're white and fluffy. The, I, you the count them. face. Yes. Count sheep. Black face. <laughs> <laughs> what Woo! time is it? Are we done? Hold on, I got to the, Wait, the best episode me. of all time. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, that works. All I right, mean, so I, you got to go do. Are we drunk? I know. I got to go drink. Boy, oh boy, it never ends. I haven't seen my lady since uh, Hanukkah. I'm doing bonfire, and oh. that, that one. My ears are already bleeding thinking about it. Crackle, crackle. Oh, I'd like to crackle under pressure and. <laughs> But anyways, uh, yeah, I'm doing Bonfire after this. And then I have the baseball show, PBL Roundup. Ooh, Check that out. Wednesday yikes. nights, 9 Eastern to midnight. And that show's three hours. Oh, well, luckily, it's an exciting sport. It's three hours. It's, it's a great show. I love it. I'm proud to be part of it. I'm meeting so cool people. Jose Rijo. Uh, we had, uh, you know... Gene Kelly was on, or wow, whoever. Was the, one. The, the the actor? I made it the part of the Gene Kelly, ah. but the rest is true. Pete Rose. Oh, Rosie, baby. Kirby Puckett's coming over my house. Hey, it was Puck. a good time. Isn't it funny? Prince and Kirby Puckett both dead. <laughs> <laughs> is that that crazy? Well, Chris Rock. That's said what people do. The they only do. black people in Minnesota ah. are Prince and Curry Puckett, but now they're both dead. So according to Chris Rock, there's no blacks in Minnesota. Well, tell that to George Floyd. Was he Minnesota? Also dead. Oh, yeah, Minneapolis. That's right. I mean, there was a fucking riot. That's right. There certainly was. Things have gotten a lot better since then. <laughs> um, all right. We got we to gotta wrap it up before we get canceled. All right. But check out PBL Roundup. It's a fun show. But that's what I was going to say is uh, it's working. Look at that. It's working. Yeah. You got clocked. It's working. Cold but uh, the show is very, very lengthy. Ah. I think two hours is good for anything. Don't you think? Yeah, maybe not this. <laughs> this is a good hour. This is two hours in one day. I'm dying. Plus the Patreon. All right, where are you going to be there, Dickless? <sighs> well, I think I'm can't. I think I, my movie has seven percent on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> um, you got that right. Right now, right this moment, you can walk over. If you're in New York City or anywhere nearby, you can go over to the Angelica Cinemas. East Village, and go buy a ticket and watch the movie. And please do fill it up. Popcorn, candy, soda. And then July 6th. Is that this Wednesday or next Wednesday? I think it's next Wednesday. Next. Yeah. next Wednesday. Next. Is that right? No, it's this Wednesday. Tomorrow. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Uh, tomorrow. tomorrow yeah. I forgot this is the number two ep. Tomorrow. Um, well, tonight I'm in Whitefish, Montana with the baseball. PBL Roundup. Wow. You're not going to want to miss that. That you want to see. That sounds so made tomorrow. Up. Um, if you're at home, watch PBL Roundup. You're going to see me playing baseball. It's going to be fun, crazy, shag and fly balls, the whole thing in Montana. But also, July 6th, there's a bunch of AMC theaters. Check your local listings. Yes. 7.30 p.m., one night only. we got to sell these out tomorrow night. It's all over Jersey, all over the place. So uh, go do that. Go see it, please. Any road stuff? Oh, of course, road, uh, July 29th. Uh, road I, I mean, August, I got... Nashville coming up in August. Ooh, I love it. I got the Hartford Funny Bone coming up. I um, love it. I got, I got a few things. I'm fucked. I'm 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 wiped. Yeah, we're all wiped. Wipe my ass. Uh, I'm at uh, Houston Improv, San Antonio, LOL, Lexington, Kentucky at Comedy Off Broadway. Uh, we did the Irvine Improv. Wise guys this weekend in Salt Lake City, motherfucker. Then uh, Comedy Connection in, uh, what's that called? Providence. Providence. West Palm Beach Improv. That's a big room. Ooh. Richmond Funny Bone. Uh, Brea Improv. Wilbur Theater. Neptune Theater. The Portland something or other. Something in New Haven. I think the Hawthorne Music Hall. Danbury. Danforth. Orlando Improv. Maybe. Uh, Vancouver. Toronto. Give it a goog. New Orleans. We're coming to the joy. Give it a Goog. Look it up. Praise Allah. We might be drunk. Out to lunch. I hate myself. This year's material. Did I get that right? Yeah, all that stuff. All right. And uh, yeah, queef it up. Chuck, killing it. Get on the Patreon. Get a mug. Get a shirt. Get a handy. Patreon is sick. Sick. Killer, bro. It's, it's fire. And your thing's out now, right? 109 would be out at this point. Mm. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, next mm. Next Thursday, so we got a new video out and uh, all kinds of Q and Anals. So check it out, give it a whirl. We love you. I'm gay. Comedy. <laughs>